Man, gather round. OG7 back here. And today, I have a tale of victory. I have a tale of glory. A few strong, incarcerated men trying to change their lives and put out positive messages on YouTube. Hey guys, I have an interesting video today for you. The topic of the video today is actually um, my response to It's Mean, uh, my beef with Wes Watson, GP, penitentiary life. So guys, I just got back from uh, a trip down south. I tried to uh, do some collaborations with uh, C.T. Fletcher, uh, Cali Muscle, uh, Big Hurt 916, and Wes Watson, because I'm trying to uh, launch my channel. I want to get to a million subscribers so that I can make a living off of YouTube as well. You know, like the rest of the YouTubers, right? I think I have a right to do so. And so uh, it was just like, um, it was actually a good trip, but it was kind of like haphazard. Went down there. Uh, they still have some COVID-19 restrictions in place. So uh, CT Fletcher wasn't available, but shout out to Big Carl. He let us, uh, he let me and my training partner train in his gym. Uh, even though it was close to public, you know, he let us in because I told him I was a veteran. And I told him I, uh, I spoke to CT Fletcher and he said I could train whenever I felt like when I was in town. So even though the gym was not open to the public, he let me and my training partner train, which was really nice. So Carl's an awesome guy. He's a good representative to uh, Iron Addicts Gym. So like I said, shout out to him. Thanks again, Big Carl. Look forward to seeing you next time I'm down there. And uh, and this is a positive video, guys. I just wanted to... I felt it was uh, pertinent because um, it's mean. He's uh, He's got a beef with Wes Watson because Wes Watson doesn't like to do collaborations with other inmates getting out of prison. Uh, trying to launch their channel and so by, on the one hand I can understand where it's mean where it's, where he's coming from you know because I kind of feel the same way but then you got to look at it objectively like so I, I reached out to Cali Muscle because I was actually I was actually in San Quentin prison with Cali Muscle I didn't know the guy personally I just everybody knew who he was because you know he said he saw himself Cali Muscle so you got to think about the bravado or the ego or the fuck the balls, right? Or the gumption you gotta have to call yourself Cali Muscle in the California Pino Institution, man. You gotta have some big balls, man. So that should tell you a lot about dude's character. And uh, not to you know go into his business or anything, but he was a shot caller for the Oakland car. I didn't really fuck with shot callers because I was what was called a lone wolf. And I actually gave myself a name, Dead Man Walking, which I got from uh, being at level five on the fifth tier of San Quentin. The fifth tier is for people who have 25 years or more. So, I mean, I had 26 years. I was up there with the lifers, right? So, I got to see Tookie Williams. and the, I was up there on death row with all the death row inmates. And so, what happens is death row inmates, you, they, only get to, they, um, they only get to shower um, once a day, man. So, I think they take them out for a shower. They, they bring them all out shackled. I think they take them individually. I'm not sure. I don't remember. It's been a while. But I remember the, the guards would yell out, dead man walking. And that just means the death row inmate is on the tier. And our, our cells are locked down anyway. But that, you know, don't, don't have your hands outside of your cell. Nah, nah, they might bite them off. They're like they're like cannibals and, and fucking um, serial killers, man. And just atrocious, demonic human beings. So you just want to make sure you got your hands inside the cell because they might just eat them off, right? So I, I adopted that name, Dead Man Walking, because um, when I was in prison, as a, a, a mixed race, I was an other. So I didn't really have a car. I'm not from California, so I didn't, I didn't want to join any gangs or anything. And so the first thing dudes were telling me when I got to San Quentin Prison is like, oh, you know, homie, you can't, you can't walk the yard alone, or you got to join this car, or you got to join that car. And this video is not about bashing any cars. It's about, you know, understanding that sometimes you got to ride alone, man. So I enjoyed being a lone wolf. And so when I got out of prison, I didn't even know. When I went to prison, there wasn't no fucking internet and fucking email and fucking all this other shit, right? I don't even think there was a fucking YouTube. I don't know. Maybe I didn't know about it. I might have been ignorant, right? But I, there 
I didn't know what the internet was, email, none of that. I didn't even know what the fucking, um, you know, cyberspace was, right? So, um, fortunately for me, I had a homie who had got out prior to me. He'd been out for about, I did 10 years, he did 7. So he's out for 3 years before me, and he got into computers. And he told me about all this stuff. He gave me my first computer, you know, told me to go to community college, take up some computer classes. You know, he came over every night, helped me to study because the shit was like fucking Chinese. And being, I was on high risk parole for three years, meaning, you know, you have uh, involuntary manslaughter or chart, you know, high, high risk charges like that. You're high risk parole. You're doing the whole three years. And you got to have a job. They got to know where you're living at or they violate you and send you back to prison. And being I did 10 years flat, I, I didn't want to go back to prison, and it wasn't because I'm scared, it's just because of the atrocities and the horror, right? The horror that you go through as a as a human being. And I've seen horrors in war, don't get me wrong, it's a, it's a different kind of horror. It's like, I don't want to say an honorable horror, but it's like, you're on a mission, you know, you think you're doing good, but sometimes you got to do bad things in order to make good things happen. So then you have this moral compass of, Oh, you know, I'm chopping dude's head off because, you know, democracy. Or, you know, I'm severing this lady's body in half because I need to know where the men are of her village and it's for democracy. So you got this, like, this honorable flag you're carrying. Kind of like the conquistadors when they went around slaughtering the Muslims. You know, if you didn't want to convert to um, uh, Catholicism or Christianity, they slaughter you, right? So they had this moral compass. They were doing it for God. Whereas in prison, the horrors you see, you know, guys getting butt-fucked when they're not even homosexuals. And the part I didn't understand about this shit is, in prison, dude, they got flaming homosexuals that walk around. Like, dude, they got they got three types of homosexuals in prison. They got the flaming type. Like, you got these dudes out here, you fucking trans, transgender dudes. Not a hey, YouTube, man, I'm not bashing transgender. I'm just, I'm just qualifying them that there are a man who wants to be a woman. So, they get the... Um, the estrogen to get the boob jobs, you know, and then, uh, you know, the estrogen changes their masculine f uh, features to feminine, you know, they get, they get butt implants or whatever, you know, and a lot of the dudes didn't have either the money or forewithal to get their penis sliced like a hot dog and shoved up into their body, right? Some did, don't get me wrong, some of them went all the way, but the, unfortunately, they're still categorized as a male. So just check this out, homie, like, you got level 4, level 5 prison. Well, level 5, you know, you're only getting out one hour a day. Level 4, you get to do a program, right? So you get to go out, you get unlocked for work. You know, if you got work, you get unlocked for that school, right? Chow, shower. So it's kind of a more relaxed program. You're still locked down. But you get to hit the yard, so you see these flaming homosexuals walk around like they got guys in prison that have breasts and fat asses or... You know what I mean? Or they're just flaming homosexuals to say they don't have any of those attributes, but they still, you know, one thing I used to tell my homie, like, I used to specialize in women with flat asses because if you if you got a girlfriend who's got a flat ass, you just bang her out, doggy style her asshole, like, every day for about a month, dude, just smashing it. I mean, just smashing it, right? Her ass will get fat. I've done it several times. This is not a fucking theory or hypothesis. And I've noticed this, like, the guys in prison get fucking their ass like, like the homosexuals. Man, they got fat asses, bro. So the point I'm making is this, dude. Like, they got those flaming homosexuals like that. You know, like, the, let's say the ones that are the transgender dudes, right? We got those. That's category one. Category two is the flaming homosexuals. You just walk around. Like, they want to be women. They got they get fucked in their ass like they, got, they wear their hair long or, you know, they take their shirts. You know how women take their shirts and tie them up? like a bra or something, you know what I mean, like that, and show their belly buttons or whatever. And then you got the third category of homosexual, who he's a, I call him the down low. And this dude, like, i seen a lot of killers, man. i seen a lot of dudes that I knew was killers from the street because I was in the county jail with them, and they had murder charges like me. They were killers. Um, I used to look up to him in the county jail, like, okay, not, not, not look up to him like, you know, like, like he's a mentor or somebody to be admired, but I'm like, a motherfucker who got the the gumption or the grit to kill another man, you know what I'm saying? I got to take my hat off to him because I've murdered some people. 
And so, you know, I got a dude in, in, in the county jail. He got murder charges. I got murder charges. We got something to relate to. So I'm like, okay, respect, big homie, right? And this dude's got a reputation as being a killer, and he's hard, right? And maybe he's a gang leader. Maybe he's a gang member. Maybe he's a drug dealer. Maybe he's just a hard dude, right? A bank robber or some shit. And then you go to prison, man. And let, let me tell you something, guys. I don't fucking judge anybody. You know, do want to be a booty band or whatever. That's their, that's not my thing. That's just the way I was raised. I'm not judging people. I'm not saying I'm better anybody. That ain't my thing. So I'm not going to, you know, just because I'm in a place where they think it's cool to eat glasses, you know, like you take, you know, you're drinking glasses, it's made of glass, and you crush it up and eat it. Like there's some cultures that do that. I ain't doing that shit. And it ain't that I'm judging the culture. That ain't my thing. It wasn't raised like that. So I'm not... And they're going up to some mass butthole, bro. I don't play that shit because where I come from, it's called if you flip, you're going to flop. And what that means is if you're going up in a man's butthole, dude, just like you go up in a woman's butthole, that shit feels good. So then you're going up in a man's butthole, then he's going to convince you like, hey, you're going up in my butthole. This feels good. You're like, fuck yeah. Well, let me give it. Let me go up in your butthole. Like, hey, hold up, man. I don't roll like that, motherfucker. And you, just, you, just, you, never know unless you, like, you never know if you like it unless you try it. And then most dudes that are fucking horny like that, like you're a slave to your fucking cock and you're a slave to fucking penetrating some shit, your rationalization hamster will be like, hmm, man, it feels good when I go up in this butthole and he's saying it's going to feel good. If he goes up in my butthole, then you're going to fucking try it. So what does that make you? That makes you a homosexual too. And you're a homosexual if you're going up in a dude's butthole, even if, uh, what is it called? You're the stud and he's the he's the b word i don't like youtube to flag this video but you know what i mean the b-i-t word you know what i mean he's the bottom yeah he's the bottom right you're still a homosexual because you're having sex with a dude somebody's your same sex right so that's the three categories you got the transgender dude that looks like a woman and there's a lot of those in prison then you got the flaming homosexuals dudes kind of you know, they got a fat ass. Maybe they don't have titties or anything, but they, they wear makeup because they put Kool-Aid on their lips and shit. And it's crazy shit, right? Wear their hair long, tie their shirt up in a little knot in front like they got like a, like a halter top or something. And they switch and their asses are fat because they get ran up in. Just imagine, you know, it's just like when I was in the army, man, right? And this is what used to kill me. Like women join the army they, when they want to be nurses or they want to be cooks or... They want to be clerks or they want to be secretaries. But you got to imagine this, dude. You got a base full of hundreds of thousands of horny men. And you got like maybe 10 or 11 women on the base. Don't you know, bro? They're getting ran through, bro. Like, that's a woman's paradise is just be on a base with a bunch of horny dudes. Because sometimes you're locked on base or whatever. And why should a dude go off base when you got the base whore to just run through? Just you know, It's, it's, it's convenience factor. So the same thing, you got a gay dude in prison, even if he's not pretty, even if he don't look like a girl, but he's just got a fat ass, right? And you know he's a man, but he's gay, so you're just going to go up in him. But then you got the download dudes that I'm talking about. Some of them are like six foot eight, twelve motherfuckers. Like, and I don't care about saying dude's name. This dude, one dude's name was Chocolate Thunder. He's a lifer, so he can't reach me, man. Dude's a lifer, level four, Folsom, maximum security. I think he got double life, man. Life without parole or something. Six foot eight. The darkest dude I've ever seen. 26 inch arms. Motherfucker used to rep 600 pounds on the bench. I used to watch him. It's called Pig Iron. He used to rep it. And he would just take dudes' buttholes. Like, if you were a lone wolf, bro, and you were soft, bro, even if you're, like, you're a man, but you just, like, say you didn't, you never studied martial arts like me, or you never lifted weights, or you never played sports, you know, you just live with your parents, you snuggle in your bed, like that. You never really got to fucking get out. You never really had to beat the fuck out of somebody. You never had to stand up for yourself. He's going up in your butthole because you'd be like, hey, man, I'm, I'm not a homosexual. And it's like, I don't give a fuck. You're my, you know, B, you know, B word for, you know, YouTube. It's a B word, right? You're my B tonight. Hey, man, I don't, I don't, I don't do that, man. Oh, you're doing it tonight. And he just go up in your butthole. Once he goes up in your butthole, he's going to be in your butthole every night. Maybe five, six times a day. Whenever he feels like, because he has a lifer, you're weak enough to get your butthole taken. He's taking it, right? So, that's the whole thing about being a soft dude in prison, being a lone wolf. Me, on the other hand, 
Um, I had already been used to being incarcerated. I was incarcerated in and out of youth authority ever since I was like fucking, I think it started when I was like 12 years old, man. That's when I think it started. Maybe it's third. Yeah, it's like it's, it's like twelve years old. My cousin turned me on the weed. She turned me on the weed, and I just start robbing the fucking weed dealers, and I just start robbing nurses and stuff because I, I need the weed money, right? That's why they say weed's not addictive. That's a that's a fucking lie. It's a fucking lie. It depends on your genetic factors, hereditary factors, your psychology, and your chemistry, bro. That's why I like crack affects black people different than white people. Crystal meth affects white people differently than heroin affects Mexicans different than other, and alcohol affects Indian different than other people. Marijuana can affect some people different than other people. So, I know marijuana is bad. It's addictive because I used to rob people so I can buy weed, right? So anyway, I was in and out of youth authority prison, and I used to rob people with weapons, so I was maximum security. So I just knew how to handle my business as a lone wolf. I've never been in a gang because... I just never like other men telling me what to do. That's why I've always been a leader. I don't like to be a follower. So then when I get to California, I just knew, like, man, I got I had a philosophy of a lone wolf. Like, if I don't know you, homie, I don't need to know you. So the first dude would say something to me. I don't give a fuck what it was. I fucking just break his jaw because I don't know you, dude. I don't need to know you. I don't need to be no click. I ain't here for no interviews. Fuck you. Fuck your grandmother, right? And fuck your mama, right? So then once you break the first dude off, because, like, this is what I learned in prison, bro. Everything is a test, man. Everything's a fucking test, dude. If a dude says you good morning, it's a fucking test. If a dude says you how's it going day, it's a fucking test. If a dude says, hey, you're going to eat your bacon, it's a fucking test. If a dude says, uh, hey, can you give me some cigarettes from the commissary, it's a fucking test. I'm not to be tested, dude. And that's why I don't play this fucking shit. The female test, like all this bullshit women want to test you, bro. I'm not the fucking dude to be fucking tested because I don't like to be tested. Who the fuck are you to test me, right? So all I'm saying is, man, when the first, I don't give a fuck. Like, if I don't know you, homie, ain't nothing to talk about. We in the child hall, motherfucker. We in the child line. We don't need to talk about child. We don't need to talk about shit. Look straight ahead, motherfucker, or talk to your homies. I don't know you, right? So my philosophy, man, <laughs> when I got to San Quentin, the first dude, I don't give a fuck if he's black, white, Mexican, Puerto Rican. I don't give a fuck, nigga. I don't know you. So the first dude said something to me, bro. I just broke him off, beat him down mercilessly. Because I'm going to tell you something about fighting, guys. And I'm not trying to say I'm a badass or I'm a violent ass. I'm fucking stupid. The first thing about fighting is he who strikes first efficiently and powerfully wins. Because if you can catch a dude slipping... And you sleep his bitch ass, and he he got a glass jaw, and he can't take a punch. Then you got him off guard. You just keep hitting, man. You don't. It ain't like these movies where you know how Jason is trying to kill some people, and then I'll hit him upside his head with a baseball bat, and then Jason will fight on her, or, or him in the head with a hatchet, let's say for example, and he'll fall down. They'll just leave him there, man. Take the fucking hatchet out of his fucking head, chop his fucking head off, shove it up his asshole, right, and then chop his fucking legs off. Now Jason. Let me see you get up, bitch boy. Right? But they leave Jason there. <laughs> Skip it along. And then they surprise him. The motherfucker gets up, takes the hatchet out of his head. Fuck that. Chop his head off. So the first dude says something to me, man. Like, hey, what you in here for? Or, hey, what's up, big homie? Or whatever. I don't know you, motherfucker. I'm breaking him off. And I break him off ferociously, ferociously guys, because in prison... What happens when you get into an altercation? I actually just started in the county jail, but I don't want to regress. When you get into an altercation, man, it's called everybody down. Like the guards just start shooting. And they like these. Uh, I've never been in these prisons where you see on TV they shooting rubber bullets and all this fucking bullshit. And uh, what's the other thing? Sandbags. They're shooting. I ain't never seen that shit. I've seen rounds go through two, three dudes. I've seen rounds go through a dude and go by my fucking head. I've seen all kind of shit in prison where I've seen a fucking guard take a dude's leg off with a round. Bow! His fucking leg just flies through the fucking air in front of everybody, bro. And the guards let him bleed the fuck out. So all I'm saying is this, guys. When you're a lone wolf, man, you learn to fend for yourself, man. So yeah, I had heard about Cali Muscle and the pen. You know, he's 
I don't want to say he's a loud mouth. That's, I'm not trying to be disrupt, but he's a very extroverted dude. He's very confident. He's a shot caller. He runs the Oakland car. So, you know, they're doing their thing, working out in the yard. He's got them working out. I got, I was doing my own workouts, right? It's a long walk. So I just learned to be self-sufficient. So when I got out of the pen, dude, uh, my homie, one, one, one homie told me to go take community uh, college courses for computers. I did that, and I start working in... Um, I started working in corporate offices, bro. So I couldn't be as volatile as Wes Watson or as Cali Muscle. I had to tone it down because people are afraid of big brown dudes, right? So the only person that, uh, my homie knew me, so he helped me out, but he was like this, man. If I didn't study every day and I come in, every day he would have an assignment for me. Like I have to explain stuff to him in a way that was conversant. And if he asked me a question, I didn't have an answer to him. He'd say, look here, motherfucker. You want to waste your fucking time. That's all. You don't waste my fucking time. I got my own fucking life, homie. And I'm coming up here trying to help your bitch ass. So what the fuck, dude? All you got to do is read the fucking book. Hey, man, it's like Chinese. I don't give a fuck if it's like Russian. Nigga, read that shit, man. Or if you're going to fuck around, just let me know. I'll leave your ass up here with the rats and roaches. Because I used to live in this like a boarding house with rats and roaches, mice and shit, junkies. OD in the fucking bathroom, motherfucker stealing your food, right? That's what the parasa with parole did for me. So I ain't want to be in that situation. All my homie did was ask me to read a fucking book. So I read it, man. So when he come up to test me every day, every night, I had the answer. So I'm like that motherfucker yelling at me, right? So that was the only handout he gave me, and he was my homie. So what I'm trying to say here to uh, it's mean is this, big dog. I understand... We all been to prison and we all have felonies. And some of us are trying to change our life. I got that, man. It would be really cool if somebody would reach out, you know what I'm saying, and do, you know, do a justice, right? Like reach out, help a motherfucker. You know what I'm saying, when you're trying to do right. But, dude, here's the reality of life. It's me. Here's the reality, man. If a motherfucker don't know you, man, they ain't really trying to. Everybody ain't built like Big Herc, man. Big Herc is just a caring dude, man, like. You know, he, he made some mistakes and everything. He didn't have leadership. He made some bad mistakes. So he just, like, started this fresh out thing, which I think is a good thing. He launches dudes. Like, he launched Cali Muscle. He launched Wes Watson. He launched a couple other dudes. You know what I'm saying? Launched himself. My hat goes off to him, you know. But everybody ain't built from that cloth, homie. Everybody ain't cut from that cloth. And for you to sit here on your channel and be like, oh, you know, my beef with Wes Watson is, like, you know, he don't... He don't help out other prison dudes, you know what I'm saying? Like, uh, he, he he don't help people out like it's like Nate Dog 916, Texas Prison Stories, Lockdown 23 and 1, OG Badger. You know, my, man, my hat goes off to them dudes, man. But everybody ain't built like that. And here's here's what I got to say to you on that, man. You know what I'm saying? It's like I reached out to Cali Muscle, right? And he just flat out told me, hey, homie, it ain't that kind of party. Like, I only do collabs with people that I know, man. I don't know you, dog. You know what I'm saying? Handle your business. Get your social media. I didn't get mad. I had to respect that. You know what I'm saying? I had to respect that about dude because, you know, that's what he do. I reached out to Wes Watson too, man. He never got back to me, man. But, I mean, I'm not mad at the dude because it's like this, man. Sometimes you try to help a motherfucker, man, and they don't even want to help their fucking self, dude. And you spend all this energy trying to help a motherfucker, and they ain't even trying to help their fucking self. And then you put so much energy into them. And then you fucking realize, like, fuck, dude, all that energy I was putting into your fucking bitch ass, I could have put it into my fucking self, and I could have made something of myself, man. So that's the, I think that's the problem with, like, Wet Swanson, why he don't want to help nobody, homie. Because, you know, you ain't never had a homie you try to help the motherfucker, and they ain't trying to help they self, man. And there's a story I tell people, dude, this is for you, it's me. In the military, man, sometimes you go on these excursions, let's say you're out in the jungle, dude. And you're spread out, man. You're spread out like, you know what I'm saying, like 10 feet apart, man. You you got your own little sector. So then your homie Bobby, he hits, he, he hits some quicksand, man. And Bobby's a new dude. He ain't never been to combat before. It's the first time. He's scared. He want to get back to his girl because he loves his penis and how it feels to have sex with a woman. His bipolar girlfriend. He just loves her, right? You know, she writes him one letter. She hates him. Next letter, she loves him. He just want to get back. So he hits the quicksand. And he yells over me, hey, OG, man, I'm in a quicksand. And he's sloshing around like, Bobby, stop sloshing around. Quicksand, the way it works, the more you move, the more you go, hey, man, help me, man, I'm going down here. 
Hey, listen to me, man. Calm the fuck down and quit moving around. Hey, man, I, I just doing it my way. Help me, man. Help me. All right, man. Help me check this out, man. I ain't going to tell you again. Quit sloshing around. I'll help you. So then Bobby, when he's up to his fucking neck, he realizes, quit sloshing around, that you've been in quicksand before. I'll say, Bobby, I'm going to hand you this fucking this trunk from the tree. You know, one of them thick branches. And I want you to grab it. And Bobby tells you, Nah, man, I only feel safe if you do it my way and you come in and get me. Motherfucker, I ain't, I ain't coming in to get you, man. So sometimes you try to help a motherfucker, man, and they don't want to be helped because they don't understand what it means to just pull their own fucking weight. They want you to just reach down, pick them up, and they got to put some effort. It's like you hanging on a cliff, homie, and you, you bent over, and your homies, you, you hold on to your homie's hands, and he's dangling on the cliff, and he's heavy, man. And so instead of him pulling you over, like, where you both can fall, you just tell him, hey, homie, I'm going to pull you up with one hand, but your other hand, you got to grab the rocks, put your feet on it, and start pushing yourself up. And the dude don't want to listen? Hey, man, sometimes you just got to let his hand go, homie. Like in the in the movie Juice with Tupac, man, you got to let the motherfucker's hand go, homie. So that's all I'm saying is I understand, you know, you got a good heart, and you feeling like a dude that's got a large channel should reach out, you know, reach back and help dudes. And I'm just here to tell you, man, you got to be careful who you fuck with, man. And sometimes dudes get out of prison and they think they think they want to stay out, man, until they realize the hard fucking work. Let me tell you something, homie. I only went to prison one time. I did 10 years. That, that youth authority prison, man, that's different because it was before I was 18. So that was like, glad. I look at that as like gladiator school. You can fucking, you know, Get that shit out of your little nutsack. Like, get all that fucking killer fucking shit out. Because back east, if you kill a motherfucker before you're 18, they're only going to hold you till you're like 18 and in special circumstances till you're 21. But by no way are you going to get life. You're not. That's why the OGs have young dudes just smoke motherfuckers. That's why back east, young motherfuckers, 11, 12, be smoking fools because they know it. You're only going to hold me till I'm 18, 19, 21. I'm going to get out. I got a reputation. You know what I'm saying? I got clout. I got juice, motherfucker. So the whole thing is that time I did before I was 18 don't count. But then after 18, I'm getting in trouble. I went to prison, bro. I did 10 years flat. I seen motherfuckers be sitting there in their cell talking, about, yeah, man, OG, when I get out, man, I'm going to get a job. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. I'm going to go to school. I see the motherfucker a year later, man, back in reception. And I tell them, hey, OG, what's, man, I don't even speak to me, man. I'll rip your fucking head off. Hey, why you mad? Because, motherfucker, you sat here on the fucking couch talking about all the shit you're going to do when you get out, motherfucker, and you ain't fucking do it. I don't fuck with motherfuckers like you, man. Get the fuck out of my face. The motherfucker didn't speak to me the rest of my prison term because they knew it's me. They knew when I tell a motherfucker, stay the fuck away from me, dude, I will break his bitch ass off. So I seen motherfuckers in and out, in and out, my 10 years, homie. Ten years, I'm sitting there like I told the I told the uh, I told the parole board it's me. I was like, my first year, I got it. My first year, level four, I got that shit. I was like, oh, this shit's crazy. Hey, you know what, uh, Warden? Man, I'll I'll never get in trouble again. I'm I'm converted to Christianity and Islam and Buddhism. You know what I mean? Confucianism. I believe in all kind of stuff now. And I'm gonna be a good dude, man. I'm gonna be a good boy. You let me out. I learned my lesson. Woo! I would never pull a gun on anybody. I, man, I swear, I'd be a Boy Scout, a Girl Scout, any kind of scout. You know what the fucking word told me is me? Oh, that's good. That's good, OG, that you, you learned and everything. Unfortunately, you got nine more years, motherfucker. I said, no, nah, but I got it. Like, prison's about, you know, reform, you know, re rehabilitation. I'm, I'm rehabilitated, man, because I ain't built for this shit. I had nine more to go, man. So I saw a lot of motherfuckers talk that do go to shit, like what they going to do when the fuck they get out. And it's all hot air, homie. So all I'm saying is, dude, like I understand you feel Wes Watson should be reaching back, helping people. But just like Cali Muscle told me, man, motherfucker got to get their own shit. Because this, this is a phrase in the Bible, man. God helps those who helps themselves, man. You know, faith is, uh, you know, move your feet and have some faith, right? You got to take action, man. So. You know, no disrespect to you, man. You know, you got the right to feel that way. But I just wanted to give you a different perspective on it. Like, you know, each man, dude, each man's got to pull his own way. Like, 
A strong man can't make a weak man strong. He can only show him, like, the way to do it. The weak man's got to put the work in, homie. So, you know, I would, I would like somebody to put me up and pull me on, man. You know what I'm saying? Like, launch my YouTube channel and collab with me, man, and give me thousands of viewers, millions of viewers. But it just ain't going to happen, man. But I ain't going to sw- fucking curl up in the fucking ball in the fetal position in my bed, sucking my thumb, talking about, hey, man, nobody can help me, man. Poor me. Man, fuck that, homie. So, you know what I mean? I just wanted you to have a objective view of what's watching. I actually subscribe to this channel. I subscribe to yours, too, just because, I, you know, I dig where you're coming from, homie. I just disagree. And hopefully you can look at it as a, as a pot of light I'm sending out to you, you know. But until next time, you know, OG7 back. Out.